The gaming legacy of the Nintendo Wii library is always going to be marred by the ever-present onslaught of shovelware. Every console has its absolute garbage, but the Nintendo Wii was notable for having long droughts in between flagship Nintendo releases which were filled by mainly derivative schlock trying to get you to buy Wii Sports again. And it should be no surprise to you and everyone else who ever owned a Nintendo Wii that Yu-Gi-Oh! 5DS Wheelie Breakers is actually pretty good? Wait, hold on, that's not right. It seems impossible. Everything, and I mean everything, indicates that this should be utter crap. It comes from a franchise that played the tired Saturday morning merchandising circuit right at a time when cable television and FCC regulations had already rendered that marketing strategy obsolete and unprofitable. It's a brand associated with the scummiest of barely regulated child-targeted marketing tactics, a frustratingly determined chop shop localization company, a booster pack business model criticized for resembling gambling perpetuated by a company that now makes actual gambling machines, and an even scummier foreign distributor that was ripping off their own licensors in a case so open and shut their lawyer could only describe it in dual monster terms. I need to put you in the proper context to truly understand what environment this game is releasing in. Yu-Gi-Oh! is stuck in a quirky transformative moment. At the point at which this game comes out, the kids who were raised by shows like this are now clamoring for unlicensed fan subs of Code Geass and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's having to compete for its new target audience's attention with the likes of Sonic X and whatever the hell Dinosaur King is. Other shows coming out like Duel Masters were such blatant clones of the underlying formula that someone at Plastic Cow Productions felt it necessary to release it in US markets with a full-on parody dub. And you didn't even need to step out of the franchise to get a parody since unlicensed parody dubs of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Second Series anime had already become YouTube's killer app. The game itself, which today cost a grand total of $2 on a GameStop bargain bin rack, takes the absolutely silly concept of the fourth part of what is now a six-series, three-universe franchise to its logical video gaming conclusion. It was made for an underpowered console that only Nintendo really knew how to make good games for. Consumers made a mental association between third-party Wii and Schlock, at the same time developers associated Nintendo hardware with poor sales and lost profits. There is absolutely nothing between the game, the price, the franchise, the hardware, or even the concept that should ever indicate any sense of quality, enjoyment, or value. Also, it's made by Konami would retroactively taint it except for the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! booster packs are already effectively gambling. The contestants in this high-stakes card game-related motorsport drive specialized autonomous vehicles with built-in holographic projectors down a selection of passable, if uninspired, track designs. Gameplay is far more Mario Kart than Magic the Gathering, though. Life points, speed counters, and dual monsters cards are all words you might have heard from the 5DS cartoons or from playing the real-world TCG or OCG equivalents, but none of them work at all like you would expect due to the necessity of balancing card and motorsports. The motorcycles you drive work nothing like the animation of which they got the idea from. For start you actually drive them. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5DS the animation is very particular that the memetically comical card game motorcycles are actually autonomous, they drive themselves. Here though, you're definitely expected to juggle both driving and card games at the same time and in real time. It turns the game from an overly complicated strategy game into one that's far more Twitch focused than anything bearing the franchise name should be allowed to have. The way cards work in this game is far more like a Mario Kart item box than a Yu-Gi-Oh! duel. Here, however, instead of receiving a single random item influenced by your place along the track, you draw from a deck from around 15 to 30 into a hand of up to 7 cards at once. This means alongside your driving you also have to manage incoming card pickups, scroll through and activate each one at the correct time, and try not to crash when reading all of that problem solving card text. A lot of game mechanics you expect to work in one way work the opposite. Your life points meter is almost a non-factor. You would expect that going down to zero would mean game over, but instead you just 
spin out for a moment before going right back up to the animation standard 4000. Milling out your deck is a lose condition in both the real world and animated versions of the card game, but here it's just a minor inconvenience. Look, I'm completely out of cards, but the game's letting me race just fine anyway? The actual win condition is just to get to the finish before your opponent does something that I would have just expected on literally any other racing game. The plot of this game is pretty much the way every Konami Yu-Gi-Oh! game has handled the story mode. You select your Deviantart recolor of the main character from a list of about 15 completely unoriginal schemes, after which you go through roughly the same story beats as the anime it's cribbing from. So, aside from some rather odd implication that my Yusei recolor really wants to meet Yusei for some unexplained reason, the plot runs roughly as follows. 1. Random duel with a criminal punk who should really serve as a tutorial but doesn't. 2. Arbitrary qualifying tournament, rounds 1 and 2. 3. Run in with a police officer that is vaguely similar to the first and third episodes of 5Ds, including the laughable premise that you can get out of being arrested by dueling the law enforcement officer and winning. 4. Final round of arbitrary qualifying tournament. 5. Second actual title drop tournament with no pesky plot interruptions. 6. Final battle with Yusei where supporting characters that were friends of the protagonist now have oddly wavering allegiances. At the behest of a friend who has gotten tired of me criticizing things that I've never watched, I binge-watched approximately 96 episodes of the show it's based off of and I plan to watch the rest of it. Since I don't do reviews of video content due to concerns over content ID harassment, I'll just take this opportunity to stand on the Anime Critique soapbox for a moment and say that Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Ds is a good series and you should watch it subbed, it's on Crunchyroll right now! That being said, this game does an absolutely terrible job of translating any of the story of 5Ds. Instead, it invents its own odd, half-baked tournament arc that vaguely slots in somewhere between the Signer and Dark Signer arcs. It also seems to forget a lot of the non-dueling context of the show, such as how people who live in this abandoned wasteland called Satellite are supposed to be an underclass. Yusei had to drive through a three-minute maintenance hatch in a garbage pipeline, but here you just show up after qualifying for a tournament that you legally shouldn't have been allowed to enter. I haven't watched the cut down for Americans dub version, and we should all strive to put it out of our memory, but I'm going to say it's probably 4Kids' fault why these plot holes exist. If you're buying this thing as anything other than an odd curiosity about a weird moment in a By God franchise's history, settle up for some freshly banked disappointment. There is literally no reason to play this thing for the story. You'll get a better idea of what this is about by watching an abridged parody dub, assuming they still exist on YouTube anymore. I had fun with it. It's a weird entry in a weird part of a weird franchise, which even in its home country has always had to walk the fine line between legitimate storytelling and toy advertisement. But despite absolutely everything telling me that this should be hot garbage, it's actually fun for the $2 I spent on it. Just don't expect miracles.